Wow, this is about to get interesting. Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. Today we're going to be looking at something that has caused quite a bit of controversy in the mesh radio scene, in particular to do with the mesh tastic. Now what we're looking at here is a Lilygo T Deck Plus and for those of you that are already familiar with this device you'll know that you can use this device on mesh tastic networks. So, Basically, this firmware here, which is absolutely excellent, and it's been designed by um, a guy called Manuel, and it's a very, very cool firmware that basically allows you to use MeshTastic on a standalone device, and it works very, very well. It's kind of one of my daily drivers. I use this all the time. But there is now a new kid in town. From the developer of Ripple, we have a firmware that is capable of using MeshTastic networks, even though it's not actually strictly a MeshTastic device. But actually none of these devices are actually strictly MeshTastic at all. They're just development devices. So what we can see here is our home screen. And you can actually see here, we've got a long fast channel. So if you're familiar with MeshTastic, you'll know that long fast is like the kind of public nickname for the, for the public chat. And you can basically go into this public section here and you can just message just like you would on a normal MeshTastic device. Um, what's quite interesting about this is it does actually hold the messages. So when you turn off the T-Deck and turn it back on, the message is still there, so they're persistent, but you can easily clear all of the messages by just basically hitting that erase button there. You also notice there's this timestamps button here. If you turn that off, the text gets a bit larger and you know you don't get the timestamps you can turn the timestamps back on i like that feature so you can tap messages in here the text is a little bit small in this box i'm not sure why at the moment i need to ask the developers about that um, but basically yeah it will just send messages just like just like normal and you get this little block here um, that shows that color when it's actually kind of received the when the message has been acknowledged you've also got an on-screen keyboard as well because originally these devices or this firmware was designed for sort of some of the other touch devices that don't have a keyboard like the t-deck um, they actually kind of implemented this really nice um, this really nice keyboard which is really really super super responsive um, so this is another really interesting thing about this firmware it doesn't use lvlg it's actually very very fast and very very snappy so you can quickly scroll through messages and all of that you know very very fast also that becomes pretty nifty in the node list um, where you can scroll very very fast down your node list like that um, there are a few little quirks here where like some of these texts are overlapping other text on very very long names for nodes um, but you know I think these things could probably be, be quickly easily ironed out so you can see on the main screen we've got time we've got the battery information there we've also got GPS information here as well so at the moment we haven't got any satellites um, being, being received there you can also configure your channel information and everything here you can set your name and your short name and then that's the automatically generated public key there we've got transmit power we've got max hops you can actually set on here um, whereas the other firmware is kind of like more of a dynamic um, hop system which works pretty well and there's other menu options here such as the ability to turn off replies to trace routes that sort of thing and um, probably for an extra extra bit of security there but yeah it's a very slick and very minimal firmware and it actually performs very very well on this ESP32 device. That being said we do actually have something quite complex on the screen and that is the map screen so this is a fully featured map basically and all of these obviously you see here are all meshtastic nodes in the area um, there's different zoom levels this is done by a map tile system and the map tiles are stored on the sd card so we've got sd card support on this firmware as well this blue dot is your location or the last location that it obviously received via gps and this moves and scrolls the map as you move around and also these points will move if other stations move about as well so it's really really cool for tracking without having to get your phone out or do anything like that then there's the sort of main menu option which allows you to configure different things so you've got the gps information there um, which actually looks a bit wrong we've got sound notifications so you can have it single you can have it on a loop um, originally it was the, the default was on a loop and you couldn't change it and I, I said well we get so many messages now um, on the mesh that we only need it to sort of beep once to show that the message has come through we don't need it repeating vibrating the LED I'm not actually sure what that's for it might be if you've got another um, notification sort of thing like an LED or vibration uh, connected to another GP GPIO or something like that you can turn off GPS location there um, the radio it's obviously showing it's a 1262 there 
And this setting, which is really, really neat, this allows you to create other networks. So you can create another network here. I could create a Ripple network on this one as well and run both side by side. So for example, we can set up a Ripple network here. We can type in the frequency that we want to use on this one. And we can then just obviously get that one set up. You can choose the spreading factor. So this is like completely manual um, configurations here. And then once you've done that, you can see all your details there. And then when you go back to the main screen, you've got this extra network here, Ripple 869, which you can then basically switch to and start using that one as well. Obviously that Ripple network is not compatible with MeshTastic and it won't use the existing MeshTastic nodes that are out there. Um, you have to have MeshTastic firmware running on, on the other nodes out there to make this obviously work. But you could just do back-to-back -back communications on this um, if you were just, you know, just on a train or a music festival or something like that, if you didn't want to use MeshTastic. Another nice but really simple feature of this firmware is you can actually use the trackball to basically wake the device up and kind of put it to sleep. Obviously, it's still going to get messages um, when it's in that sort of light sleep phase. All the usual shortcuts and things still work. You've still got backlit keyboard and, and everything else. So that's a basic rundown of the Ripple V5 firmware for the T-Deck and T-Deck Plus. Um, I think you'll agree, it's pretty nifty. I like the fact that it's very, very lightweight. It doesn't carry around a lot of unnecessary code and extra bits and pieces that you might not need um, that MeshTastic has, which obviously makes MeshTastic, it can be a little bit heavy on some of these devices. So like with this, you haven't got Wi-Fi, you haven't got MQTT, you haven't got any of this extra stuff. It's also really refreshing to see firmware like this that actually allows you to have multiple protocols because we all know lower sending data over lower is one thing, but it's the layer on top of that that makes things different, like MeshTastic or Ripple or anything else. So basically the radio communication system is the same on all of these devices. So it's really nice that the community has options. You know, we're not forced into using one particular type of hardware and one particular device. You know, we can use different devices with different firmwares and perhaps they will actually all communicate together in the future. The next step, I suppose, would be to have actual nodes supporting multiple protocols. And then we, then things are really going to get interesting because you could flick between different protocols and start having really interesting things happen. Um, Ripple's got some great features like kind of store and forward and mailboxes that work on the most modest of hardware as well. So what's this space for Ripple? They're doing some amazing stuff at the moment. And I think it's all good for the mesh radio hobby to have multiple options. And just to clarify, because I can see the comments now, some people will say, but this isn't open source. You know, Ripple's not open source, MeshTastic is. So some of the Ripple code, like Ripple Core, is actually open source. Other stuff isn't, like, you know, the gooey part of this is proprietary. But I'm sure if you wanted to contribute something, Scott's a pretty open-minded guy, so just drop him a line, and I'm sure you'll be able to do something. So that's it for this one, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll leave links to all the information about this stuff down below. So let me know what you think in the comments. Are you happy that we could have multiple protocols going forward? You know, will it extend and enhance the hobby? Let me know what you think, guys. Anyway, catch you next time.